and welcome to Face Check. Uh, you're joining me for the second half of the third round of Swiss, a game night kit held at Whaling Games in mid-August, where packs were legal up to Old Hollywood. I've just suffered my first defeat of the day at the hands of Rossi's Near Earth Hub, but if I can win the second game I should still be guaranteed the victory if I split my next game as well. I'm about to get a taste of my own medicine as I face off against Ross playing Noise, and I'm playing a Trixie Gentechi biotech deck uh, but that mostly just aims for the kill. A few of you have noticed there's been no videos uploaded for the past few days, and we're disappointed you had nothing to watch over the bank holiday weekend. Uh, thanks mum. And while I like to say that was because I was off doing something exciting, the reality is that my trial version of the software I used to make the videos ran out, and the place I bought my license from took a couple of days to process my authorization code. I did manage to play some Netrunner on Saturday though, and that tournament will be uploaded in the not too distant future. Still, back to the game in hand, and you're about to witness this deck do a couple of things it has never done before. Before we get onto that, uh, just talk through the, the opening here. Uh, I took a mulligan. Um, while my choice of ID is influenced by the cards I start with, uh, there's usually enough damage cards in there to make me choose the, the brewery, and use my ID to cause two net damage. Although if there's not enough ambushes in my opening hand, uh, my mind usually starts to wander and I think, well, I'm bound to draw into lots of them soon, so I better take the brewery and use my ID to cause two net damage. It's a little bit of tunnel vision, but there have been many times when my opponent's on one or no cards at the start of their turn, and I've chosen the greenhouse, uh, which places four advancement tokens for three clicks, and I've just been thinking to myself, I could have won here uh, if I'd only chosen the brewery, and, and never been the opposite way around. So it really depends what you want the deck to do and how you build around it. Um, but I have built this with the intention of flatlining the runner as often as possible. So I've started my turn by uh, using Hedge Fund and then installing uh, a piece of ice over HQ and installing a Psychic Field. Uh, you may have noticed from some of the previous videos I always like to, to open with that. It's a, a great way of, of just seeing if the runner is going to run what you put down or not. Uh, and if they do, they, they can be punished very heavily for it. Then going into my second turn, I, I use Mushin Notion. Uh, it's a double, but places three advancement tokens on a card from hand. And then use my third action to place a fourth advancement token. Now this is something that um, you, you might not initially think of uh, as, a, as a newer player. Uh, but placing that fourth advancement token puts a lot of extra pressure on the runner. If they run it and it's an ambush, then uh, Cerebral Overwriter would do four brain damage, leaving them with only one card for the rest of the game. Uh, if it's a Project Junebug, then it does eight net damage, um, which means they'll have to spend the first three clicks drawing up, assuming they can even survive it then. Uh, so early days when they don't have to run anything, uh, definitely worth, again, testing the waters and seeing what they do. In this instance, it's a, a future perfect. Um, I'm aiming to, to score out, and as I said, you've not seen much of the, the deck doing that this uh, last couple of rounds. Um, but I'm going to see if I can win the normal way. Uh, I'll probably start with a couple of agendas in hand uh, and want to, to try and get them out. So, having scored a future perfect, I'm now three points up, uh, which is great. <clears throat> if I can get another two points, uh, then I'll be in a very good position to have all my traps online. Uh, traps only really work under two conditions. One, when the runner has to run them. And two, uh, when you have enough money for them to, to fire. Uh, without either part of that combination, then you're a little bit behind. Um, but you can obviously try and trick the runner into thinking that you've installed agendas uh, instead of traps. Um, and just see what they do. So... Ross uh, installed an imp and thinking I had some other sort of asset there, I uh, went to go check it out. Uh, turns out it was the psychic field, uh, but we both bid zero uh, uh, and he, he leaves it there. Uh, not worth imping now that he knows what it is. Now I'm not quite sure exactly what kind of noise uh, Ross is running yet. Uh, you know, imps are fairly standard include, uh, as is cash. Daily casts. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good economy card for noise, doesn't use up a click every turn, and, and you get the money back. Um, but with little indication of, of anything else, all I know is he's going to be installing some viruses, and I'm probably running. Um, so with my deck, I, I keep the, the games going. I install Advance Advance, if that's a 5-3 a agenda again, I can uh, score it out next turn and be on 6 points. 
or if Ross runs it, then uh, again, it's a decision he has to make. Does he think it's a, a trap or does he think it's an agenda? And instead, he's electing to just get set up a little here. Um, installing a street peddler there and an adjusted chronotype. Um, so I had a quick look at what street peddler had, had pulled. Probably a, a wild side on there. And we'll install that at the end of my turn. So he's got the, the pancakes combo set up and gets two free cards at the start of his turn. Uh, that card that I'd put them was a, a fetal AI. <coughs> a fetal AI. Um, taking me up to five points and, and really putting the pressure on uh, Ross to, to run and check everything I put them now. Uh, in an ideal world, uh, I'll use that pressure to, to get off a trap like Cerebral Overwriter with four advancements, which means he has to end his turn with only one card in hand, uh, and then use it to kill him, or alternatively, still a possibility I might score out. But uh, as I said, tu tunnel vision a little bit with this deck, uh, if, if I can get the kill, I tend to go for that. But Ross isn't really set up at all here. He's going to be getting two cards a turn, but he doesn't have uh, Aesop. He doesn't have any breakers down. Um, I've got five points already, although I'm, I'm now low on credits. Um, but if I just spend a couple of turns setting up, uh, I should be in a, a very strong position. Now here he's played the Data Sucker and uh, make us a run on HQ. There must be something in my hand for me to raise Chimera. Uh, I wouldn't ordinarily uh, spend the two credits on that just to, to let him in. I think it's because I have the, the Scorched Earth in hand. It's a singleton copy in my deck and I don't want him to imp it. Uh, so it does keep him out, but then he immediately plays Parasite and kills the ice before running in again. So always a risk. Uh, and there goes a Cerebral Overwriter as well. So... Uh, as I mentioned, I maybe was thinking about getting the kill, or I was maybe thinking about uh, landing a tag or getting a scorch. Um, but what this has done is now left HQ wide open, and I've just had to, to money up that turn. So I've only got four credits, which is enough to turn on a snare. But there you, ha you see Ross having a, a little look through his uh, archives, and kind of pausing when he gets the Lamprey. Now Lamprey's a, a one-cost virus, uh, so already good for noise, who, who gets the mill a card every time he... Uh, installs a virus, uh, and then he plays Clone Chip and then runs into HQ. Uh, now the ability on Lamprey, uh, Clone Chipping out Lamprey, the ability on Lamprey is every time there's a successful run the on HQ, the Corp loses a credit. Uh, so I was on four credits, which is enough to trigger a snare. Lamprey made me go down to three, and then Ross hits the snare, which I can't afford to trigger. And then there's the Scorched Earth. Uh, which he imps away, so imp can uh, trash any card, even if it can not normally be imped, uh, during an access. Um, so there goes the sort of kill part of my combo, and I'm now going to be in a little bit of trouble for money. Uh, I'm down to only two, and um, my cards in hand probably aren't that useful. So I've chosen not to purge here. When you purge, Lamprey will go away, and it'll also get rid of the, the remaining imp tokens, uh, as well as any that Data Sucker have built up. But I have nothing to protect the HQ and, and potentially nothing in hand. So I, I resign myself to losing those two credits, I think, and just trying to improve my position, and then I'll purge and, and get into a better position uh, when I have the cards that I need. Uh, I'm not sure this is a, a good move by me at all. Um, purging sooner rather than later did seem like probably the, the right play. Getting rid of the imp tokens and the, the lamprey in one fell swoop. I'm um, sure he could still come in but he'd only be getting to see a card. He wouldn't be uh, making me lose a credit and he wouldn't be able to, to get rid of anything that he found uh, without paying for it. And as he's low on credits as well... Um, be very difficult for him to trash anything. Um, so yeah, definite error on my part there, I think. Uh, but this version of Noise tends to recur Lampreys uh, quite a lot. So if I had no ice in hand, uh, then there'd be nothing I could do the next turn, or the next turn, or the next turn. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, I think I was looking for the ice, which I found another uh, Chimera. Um, but I didn't have a chance to install it, 
um, and then when he accessed from hand, emped it away, and so now I'm going to have to dig for ice again. Now I'm very light on ice in this deck, uh, I only run three Mother Goddesses, three Chimeras, two, or maybe three Kitsunes now. Um, only the Mother Goddesses really keep them out for any length of time, the, the Chimeras are of strength zero, they can be instantly parasited away, um, and the Kitsunes are for uh, trying to land a tag uh, with, uh, by, by forcing them to access Snare. Uh, but all of this only works with money, and as I don't have any, then it's going to be a bit of an uphill battle. Still, he's not filming any agendas yet, and I am five points up, so uh, a little op more optimistic than perhaps I should be at this point. Um, but if I can find some ice and then get some money quickly, I'll be in a, a good position again. Now they've installed a card on top of uh, Psychic Field. Uh, that'll probably be a Shell Corp. Um, now I can't afford to either res or use it, uh, especially as the, the uh, Psychic Field requires a side game to, to work. So if I have no money, then you can always win the side game and then you can trash everything as normal. Um, here you see he's, he's much more set up now, he managed to find a, an ace up and when I purge uh, that does trash Lamprey so he can't sell that but he already had a cash uh, and so he's now going to money up quite quickly. Uh, he'll be able to go from zero credits to, to five uh, at the start of his turn uh, for no clicks while he's got daily casts and something to sell to ace up. So, uh, despite a, a very, very strong start for me, uh, th this mid-game is not looking good at all. Uh, you could, Ross pretty much has free access into R&D, and he's going to take advantage of that by playing a medium. Now, it comes into play with a, a single token on it from Grimoire, uh, sort of a wizard's console. Um, and then the first run on R&D is going to get to access two cards. Uh, then each subsequent successful access will get him an additional virus token and that will uh, allow him to see a number of cards equal to the number of tokens on medium. So he's going to be able to dig through my deck very very quickly. Uh, I can't really deter him by using snares or uh, in fact that's the only R&D protection in there um, as they require four credits to, to trigger and I don't have any money. So things are falling apart quite quickly. I uh, install take two credits there. If I can get up to three credits and install a uh, Flotic Entanglement, um, then I would be able to, to score out if he doesn't do anything, uh, if he doesn't run it uh, and leaves me with the money. Um, however, that's a, a little bit of a big ask since he's going to be seeing a lot more of the cards than I am. Uh, now there he, it goes over the threshold of uh, seven credits. Seven credits is what it takes to install Hades Shard. Um, I've definitely binned agendas into archives uh, with the, the idea to bring them back with Jackson. Uh, however, if he installed Hades and used it immediately, I wouldn't have a chance to use Jackson. And I think there's probably seven points in there, or five points in there perhaps, uh, and, and not much I could do. Uh, so whenever you're playing against anybody you think has Hades Shard, always be aware that if they have seven credits and it's their turn, uh, they'll be able to install and use it before you can retrieve any agendas from archives. So I've still got two credits, which isn't enough to, to do anything bad to Ross if he, he accesses a card from R&D. Um, he's installed a clone chip, uh, so he can bring back a, another card at well almost. Uh, so if I go back up to four credits here, uh, you can install a Lamprey and uh, use that to, to make me lose all four in a single turn. Um, here he's, he's electing instead just to dig deep uh, into R&D. He just found a Future Perfect. Future Perfect requires a side game. Now, uh, how much do you think should be bid there? Um, I bid zero, Ross bid zero. And uh, that's an example of where side games are not random. I mean, this was Rossi's first or second click, and if I bid one, he could run in again uh, and see 
Future Perfect again and other cards. And if I bid one again, he could run it again, at which point I'd have no credits and he'd still be able to steal Future Perfect. So there was no point in me bidding any money and Ross knew there was no point in me bidding any money. So he bid uh, just one and uh, used that to get in. Now Ross did score a... a um, the Philotic Entanglement that I was hoping to find. Uh, I forgot about that. Uh, so that was never going to save me. And he's been able to dig so far through my R&D that um, I would never see the sort of agendas I wanted in time. So it's just an inevitability now, whether he finds it on this one or the next. And there it is, Va Vanity Project, the 6-4 agenda from Old Hollywood. Um, losing me the game. But... Um, 6-4 agendas are quite good because they, they keep the agenda density down. Um, sure, it's problematic if the uh, runner scores them and, and, and a runner steals them and you don't score them, but um, it certainly kept me alive a little longer uh, if I just had the, the solutions to uh, what Ross was up to. Now, I do run a copy of Cyberdex Virus Suite in that deck, um, but we didn't find it, so there was no purging done automatically. And that's now Ross beating me on both the games here. So he finishes round three of Swiss 5-1. Uh, I'm on 4-2. Uh, we'll go into the, the final round. It's only four rounds of Swiss. Um, and although I did say I was not narcissistic <laughs> in the last video, uh, we will stay with me because they went to a, an awkward table that I couldn't film. And if I win both and Ross loses both, then I should still be able to win. So we'll just say this is a, a budget top table that we're following me on. Um, anyway, if you enjoy the videos, like, subscribe. Um, if you want my waffling for the commentary to go in any particular direction, please just uh, let me know. Um, we'll get this video up on Wednesday, so that'll be when you're watching this, hopefully. And then we'll get the last two rounds up by the end of the week. Um, stick with us and feel free to give us a like on Facebook or chat on Twitter. It's at FaceCheck and uh, facebook.com forward slash FaceCheck UK.